Are you looking for ways to improve the design of your Power BI reports? Now in this video, I'm going to show you how in five quick and easy steps, you can make any Power BI report look good and transform something that looks like this into this. Now let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's talk about design, which can be very tricky. However, I have five steps for you that you can apply to any report to make it look better. And we're going to apply these steps to this report page over here, which has all of the visuals that I wanna have. So we're not gonna make changes to the visuals, purely the design we're going to change. And after we're done with our five steps, it will look like this over here. Now you see, quite a transformation. Now let's get started with step one, which is alignment. I often see reports where the visuals are not well aligned or the spaces in between the visuals are inconsistent and that gives a very messy impression. Now let's see how we can fix that for our page. Now I have no visual selected and then I'm gonna to go to the formatting options so that we have the formatting options for our page canvas background and here we can choose our color. I'm gonna go for a light gray color. Now, it doesn't really matter if you go for light gray, light blue, whatever you like. Now you see, now there's a little bit of contrast and we can clearly see the borders of the visuals. Now when we talk about alignment, we also have to consider the size of the visuals. Now, for example, here in the middle, we have three different tables and the width and the height between these three tables is inconsistent, especially the one that's on the right versus the other two. Now here we could go for the same height and same width for each table because none of them is really much bigger than the other. All right, now, which width and height are we gonna choose? Now let's start with the width. So I'm gonna select all three of the tables and then under formatting options and then here general, there we have the properties. Now here we have the width. Now let's set the width to 500. And then we can give the tables also the same height. Now let's go for 220. And just by giving them the same dimensions, it already looks much better. Now the next thing that we have to look at then is where to position them exactly. All right, now I want to have a little bit of space here on the left-hand side of my report page. So let's say that we want to have 140 pixels over there. I'm gonna take that first table, go to formatting, and then here under general properties, there we can go to position. And here horizontal, there on the left hand side, I want to have 140 pixels. Now, of course, if I have 140 pixels there on the left hand side of my report page, I also want to have 140 pixels on the right hand side of my report page. Now, if you're good in math, then you can just do it in your head. However, I usually have to use an Excel file like this one over here. Now here you see, I created two rows, one for the width of the visuals and the spaces and a second row for the horizontal position. So how many pixels from the left hand side. Now we have the space on the left hand side, 140 pixels. Then we have visual one, 500 pixels. Now add the two up, 640, all right? So we have then a space, visual two, space, visual three, and then the space on the right hand side. Now. Everything added up, well, needs to be the same as the canvas width, which is in my case, 1920 pixels. All right, now usually you have to play around a little bit with the spaces uh, that you want to have in between the visuals and on the left and the right, so that everything nicely adds up. Of course, I already pre-calculated this, okay? So once you know this, then you can go back to Power BI and just apply it over there. And to do that, that second row, the horizontal position is very helpful because I know that the space after visual two ends there at 1280. So that is where visual three starts, okay? So keep that number in mind, then I go back and then I take that third visual, go here again to general properties, and then I put the position here to 1280. Now, when you have the most right visual where you want to have it and the left one as well, then the middle one or the middle ones, well, those are very easy to position. You just have to select all three in this case, and then you go to format and then here under line, there we have distribute horizontally. And then you will see that if I select the middle one and see where it's positioned, then we have 710 pixels to the left, which corresponds to my calculation there in my Excel sheet. All right, so perfect. Now for the last one, we just have to adjust the width of the columns. So let me just drag this a little bit to the right so that everything nicely fits. And then we can just do exactly the same for all of the other visuals. So let me do that quickly. 
Now that looks already much more organized. However, still not mind blowing. So what is the next thing that we can do? Well, you probably noticed that here the titles of each visual are very squeezed to the border. And that is not great. We like to have white space, white space around the main visual and also between the visuals. Okay, now how can we do that? Well, you might think that if you go to a visual and then you go here to the formatting options, that you have something like padding or margin. However, you can have a look, but it is not there. Now, another idea that you might have is like, what if we put a border around it in the same color and then increase the thickness of that border? However, that also doesn't work because if we go here to general and then have a look here on the effects, we have visual border. However, for that border, we cannot determine the width the thickness of that line. So that's also not gonna be helpful. All right, so what we could do just for now is put a white shape in the back of a visual in the same color as the background of the visual and create some space around it that way. All right, now let's have a look how that can be done. Well, I'm gonna, gonna go here to insert, shapes, and I'm just gonna go here for a rectangle. Now this rectangle, I want to have here where my visual is. So let's make it first as big as the visual. Now, it needs to be now a little bit bigger. I want to have 20 pixels on the right, 20 pixels on the left, and the same for the height, all right? So let's go here to general properties and adjust the width and the height so that that is the case. So here the width, we can increase to 540. And then here for the height, we want to have 270 in this case, all right? And then we have to place it in the back. Now, to push it to the back, we can go here to format and then just send it backwards or you can also go over here to view, selection, and then place that shape all the way at the bottom or at least below the visual, all right? And then we can reposition it. Okay, so now we have a thick borderline going around it. However, that is not really what we want. We want to create more space, not a thick border, all right? So we just have to adjust the color now to the same color as the background of our visual, which is white. So select the shape again, go over here to style, and here we can change the fit, fill color to white. And for the border, let's turn that one off. And there you go. Now, you see, now we have white space around the visual. Compare the visual where we created the padding with the one that's right next to it. Well, that one feels much more cramped because there's no space around it, all right? So work with white space. Now, of course, we can do this for all of the other visuals as well, but before we do that, let's have a look at the card visuals there at the top as well. Now, if you have a lot of these card visuals, there's also every time a space in between, and it might be a little bit much. So what you could do is also have over here a shape in the background and then place those cards on it. Now, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna take that shape, I'm just gonna copy it and paste it and then put it in the back of our cards. Now also here we have to make sure that we send that shape a little bit backwards so that it's behind the cards. And then you see we have just one block with all of the KPI values on top of it instead of having four separate elements, which might feel like a little bit much. All right, now let's apply this then also to all of the other visuals. All right, so step one was fixing the dimensions and alignment of our visuals. Then we have step two, which is working with white space. And now it's time for step three, which is the corners of the visuals. Now, just go to your phone, have a look at the apps that you have installed on your phone, and you will see that most of the icons are with rounded corners. And we are so used to it that it often looks much better. And I think that's because it doesn't really break the flow when you look at an application. Now, the same for your Power BI reports. So usually I don't go for 90 degrees corners. Instead of that, I round them a little bit. All right, so let's select the shape that we have at the background of each visual. And then we go here to formatting options. And then here under general, then effects, there we have background and visual border. Now, I'm going to put the background on, turn it to white, and then over here we have the visual border. Let's turn that one on as well, open it up. And then here we have rounded corners. Now, let's put this one to 15 pixels. And then here for the color, instead of black, we just want to have white. And of course, let's do it quickly for all of the other visuals as well. And there you go, it straight away looks much more modern and 
app-like and also doesn't look that you just went with the default options that Power BI gave you and doesn't break the flow as much as having the straight corners. All right, so now it's time for step number four, which is borders and shadows, just to elevate these visuals a little bit from the background of the report. All right, now let's take that first visual again as an example. I take the shape and then I go here to general effects and then here we can go to shadow. All right, let's open it up and turn it on. Now, a lot of people just stick with the out of the box shadow, which I think is a little bit too strong. It's probably a good idea to soften it a little bit. Now, how can you do that? First of all, we can change the color. So here I usually go for a little bit of lighter gray, and then we can go to position and go for custom. All right, now when you change the custom, you have a whole bunch of new options that pop up. And the one that I want to change first is transparency. So over here, let's put it to 85 or maybe even 90. And with just a little bit of shadow, not too much, we can give the impression that this visual is separated from the background. All right, now let's apply it to all of the other visuals as well. Now that starts to look better and better. And at this point, it's also important to note that we didn't apply any border around the visuals, which would, I think, be a little bit much because we already have the shadow that separates the visual from the background that we have and the border is not really necessary. And when something is not really necessary, I just leave it out. Now, of course, if you're not a fan of shadows, then just go for thin border lines. However, I think it doesn't create that much separation from the background. So therefore, my preference is always for shadows. Just makes it look a little bit more modern. Now, before we go to step number five, let's do something about the title because now it has the same white background color with the rounded corners and therefore it blends in a little bit too much. Now, it's probably a good idea to have it separated. Now, how could we do that? Well, we could just get rid of that background color. So let's select it and then go to formatting, effects, and then turn the background color off. All right, that's it. And then over here, we just have to place maybe this on separate rows. So maybe we can do something like this, performance tracking 22, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we could go for this, or maybe you just want to have performance tracking on one row like this. Okay, now then we can just resize it and align it and maybe have over here performance tracking a little bit bigger. Let's go for 36 and then 22. And then you can play around also with the font. Maybe you want to have a different font or you want to make the number in bold, whatever you prefer. Okay, now it's important that we don't have a borderline around the text box. So let me turn that one off again. All right, perfect. Now, besides the title, let's also do something about the background because this gray is not the most exciting color. So let's go again to the formatting options for the page and then canvas background. And then over here, instead of this gray, we could go for a different color, like blue, whatever you like, or we can stick to gray, but there are different shades of gray. So if we go here to more colors, now color that I often go for is 240, 243, 247. All right. Now you see that is a little bit more silver gray. So there are different shades of gray. And I think this one looks a bit more modern. Now at this point, we have our visuals nicely organized on the report page. We gave it a bit more of a modern look by playing around with the corners and the shadows and now it's time for step number five now when you go to step number five you want to make sure that you're more in the final stages of the report page so you're kind of sure about the visuals that you want to have on there and not that much is going to happen anymore to the layout of the page now what is step number five well in this step we are going to choose a color theme for our visuals and give it the finishing touches and bring that layout into a background so that we don't have to load every single shape that we place now on this report. Okay, now let's start by creating that background. What I would usually do to make this process a little bit easier is I take a screenshot of my Power BI report. So let me do that quickly and then copy that screenshot over to PowerPoint where we can then create the placeholders for all of the visuals and any extra element that we wanna to add to the design of our report. So for example, we can go here to insert, shape, Choose the shape that we want to use, maybe here, the rectangle with rounded corners, place it over here, and then just make it as big as that background of the first visual. Play around here with the corners and choose the color that you like, and you do that for all of the visuals. All right, now 
Let me do that quickly. Now here we have the placeholders for all of the visuals that we have on the report page. Now you see I went for a bit of a different design, a darker design in this case. Now you can also go for a lighter design if you like that more. However, I wanted to go for something different. All right, now I also added nice gradient border lines around it, which is stuff that you cannot do in Power BI. So we have a lot more design options here in PowerPoint than we have in Power BI. All right, so let's see what else we can add. Now maybe you want to have something flash here, then you can also add something like this. Let's go for green. Let's choose that as our color, as our main color for this report. And then we have maybe a little bit more of a darker background around it. So these are all just shapes that I added. And if you're not sure if your visuals nicely fit on the placeholders, well, just make sure that you still have it has a picture there, okay? Now, you see, this is a selection pane. If you don't see the selection pane, just go to home, and then all the way here on the right-hand side, and the editing, there you can open the selection pane. All right, now let me just unhide then that screenshot that we took before, and then you can select it from here, go to picture format, and then add a little bit of transparency to it. Now, maybe a little bit more, just like this or this, and now you see everything nicely fits on the placeholder. So that's good. Now, once you did your check, just hide it again, leave it in there. You never know, maybe you need to make some further changes later on. Now, if you're a fan of icons and you wanna integrate that in your report, instead of doing it in Power BI and where every image has to load separately, you can also integrate it into the background, which I did already to save a bit of time. You see, I just added three different icons, which you can also find here under insert and then go here to icons. Okay, good. So we have a background and once you're happy with it, then what? Then we need to save it as a picture. Now to do that, just go here to file, save as, and then here, instead of saving it as a PowerPoint, go to more options, change here the type to SVG. Don't go for PNG, just go for SVG because then you can make it as big without losing quality all right so go for svg save it wherever you want to have it and then if you have more slides then just choose the one that's currently selected just this one all right and then we go back to power bi where we use it as a background all right so here we're back on a report page let's open the selection pane first so view selection and then all these background shapes that we had before you can delete so let's select them so everywhere where i have shape here I'm going to select it. And with everything selected, you can hide it uh, if you want to bring it back later, or you just delete it because we don't really need those anymore. Okay, so that is done. Then let's close that selection pane. And then we can go again to formatting options, canvas background, and then here we have image. Now, Let's choose then that background image that we just created. And that looks a little bit weird. You see it doesn't nicely fit to the page, but we can change that here in the image fit. Set it to fit. Make sure that the transparency is to zero and you see that looks much better. However, the visuals themselves, they don't really match the theme just yet. Okay, so that's then the next change that you need to do so that everything nicely matches with those colors that you set up here. So for example, these cards that we have there at the top, we can just select them all in one go and then go here to general effects. And then here for the background color, just choose the same background color that we used in PowerPoint before for the placeholders. So let's go to more colors, paste that code in there, and there you go. All right, now for the text, of course, we have to go for a white font. So let's go here to visual, and then here we have the call out value and change the color to white, all right? And for the category label, we also want to have it in white, okay? Now, of course, if the whole report is going to be in this layout, it probably makes sense to make a lot of these changes, first of all here using the themes, all right? So that you create a theme with those colors. That's gonna save you loads of time instead of having to do it for each individual visual. All right, so you could, for example, just take the current theme and then customize that. Change here the main colors, change also the color of the text. You see by default, it's now black, but we could change that to white as well. All right, and you make all of those changes so that all of the formatting becomes a little bit easier, quicker, and more consistent. And after doing that for all of the visuals, it looks like this here. And you see, I didn't make that many changes. It's just that I changed the white background colors 
to the background color of the placeholders. And then for the font, well, I made everything white. And then here I aligned, for example, the columns nicely. So that looks a little bit cleaner. All right, so that's it for the tables. And then here for these visuals that I have there at the bottom, I often get rid of all of the elements that I don't need. For example, the access I don't need if I also have data labels. So deleting the elements that you don't need creates again more space, which was step number two. And that makes your charts easier to read and makes you focus on what really matters. So in five steps, we went from a report that looked like this to this. All right, you see, quite a big change. Of course, there are more things that we can do to improve this further. However, these are five quick ones that make any report look much cleaner very quickly. Now let me know what your design tips and tricks are. Share them in the comment section below. If you wanna look at more design topics, then check out these videos over here. And I wanna thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Shh.